Hi, my name is Ron Meyer. I'm Professor of Strategic Leadership at TIAS School for Business and Society. And welcome to Meyer's Management Models, insightful tools to kickstart your thinking. And in this installment, we want to talk about the interaction pressure gauge. Now, this is a model which gives an answer to the question, how much pressure should I exert when talking to people? So I'm going into a conversation, I'm going to interact with somebody, and the question is, how much pressure do I actually want to use? Now, that's usually not the type of question that you ask yourself, but it is really thinking about what is it that I want to achieve, and if I want to achieve something, hmm, I'm going to have to, well, exert some pressure. Now, the model uh, actually distinguishes uh, between uh, a very low and a very high level, and that's why we created a pressure gauge, so going from one to five. And actually, that's along a continuum, which is on the one side, well, we're having no pressure at all. We speak of no tension in the conversation. We call it pacification. You're actually trying to pacify things, keep things quiet. So let's not bring it up, no pressure at all. And in the other extreme, so we would talk about so polarization. So in polarization, there you're creating a lot of tension <laughs> to the extent of that you're actually creating two poles. Within the middle, various types of participation, in which you're actually having a creative type of tension. Now along this continuum, and as I explained with pacification and polarization, those are probably the two extremes that you'd like to stay out of. Now, that one extreme of pacification, a, 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 pass, a passive blue, we call that circumvent. In the conversation, you don't really want to address the issue, you want to skirt around it. That's what we call circumvention. So don't bring it up. So just keep the other person happy. And then there's actually three ways in which we could participate. So, and these are various levels so at which we could create some tension. If it's only a little bit, we say, well, we're in conversation mode. We'd like to talk about it. We might be so trying to engage the other in a conversation to see if we can build on something and we can try to get something out into the open, but it's in a very playful so and open fashion. If we want to put a little bit more pressure, then we want to challenge the other and say, hey, I have a different opinion, or what do you think about this? And so do you really believe in that? With a little bit more challenge, that might be a very useful way to bring the conversation a step further. And then we can go even a step further in which we confront. Say, I don't agree. That's not a good idea. I don't want to see that anymore. So I'm really confronting the other and by putting a lot of pressure, hopefully provoking them so to come into a discussion with me. Some people might already feel, hmm, if I'm confronting, aren't I getting into a conflict? Well, that's when we've gone too far. So conflict is really where we put so much pressure and we've confronted, the, we've gone to the edge of actually getting into a fight. And of course, that's very often not very beneficial. We've polarized too much. So you see that this model actually helps to think about, so what are the types of levels of pressure which are going to be beneficial to me? So if I go so to the side of so more challenge, more confrontation, it's useful because I'm demanding things, which sometimes I need to do. So I'm holding people responsible. So I'm really trying to get into a debate, or I might be resisting what they want from me. But I'm constantly thinking about, wait a second, I need to avoid condemning the other, blaming the other, stopping listening, or getting into a fight. In the same sense, sometimes I want to take my foot from the pedal so, and I want to throttle back a little bit because very often it helps to encourage the other, show some, some appreciation, so, uh, to make sure that we explore together so, so, and that I reassure the other. But I have to avoid falling into the pitfall of actually tolerating that which I shouldn't tolerate, leaving things unspoken, maybe avoiding difficult topics or just complying and doing what the other thinks. So, here we have your interaction pressure gauge. What's the right one for you? So in terms of key insights, you see that there's not one best way of interacting. Sometimes gurus will tell you, always go into a conversation in this and then this way. And this pressure gauge actually says, no, there's not one best way. You need to think about what you want to get out of it. Now you have to realize that you probably already have your own preference. So you might stick to one side or the other, not because it's useful, because it makes you feel better. Actually, some people have actually even taken this to the level of making it their leadership style. If they're over to the side uh, of uh, being more conversational, 
We call that an encouraging leadership style. And if they're more over to the side of confrontation, it's a demanding leadership style. Again, very useful leadership styles, but you shouldn't get stuck in one or the other. You want to be able to switch between them and be agile. So yes, you can steer your interaction, so take it upon yourself to steer, and make sure that you think about what's the situation I'm in, who do I have across from the table, and what is it that I want to achieve. Well, hopefully again a simple but useful model. Hope to see you again next month.